Our next presentation is being done uh, by uh, Judy Harris with um, the St. Vincent's Catholic um, Charities and you have a couple of, uh, you have another person with you if you'd like yes, to introduce. Yes, I invited um, Shireen Camden to join me today because although St. Vincent Catholic Charities does the refugee resettlement program, really it is a community effort and, and we have a lot of partners and Shireen has been very instrumental in bringing those partners to the table and helping us to build support. So she's going to talk a little bit about at the end about some of those partnerships. So okay. I hope that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> So, um, St. So Vincent Catholic Charities, you know, we're a big agency, we're over on Willow, um, we've been doing resettlement for a long time, we have other programs like a children's home and foster care, adoption, counseling, and we even have an immigration law clinic. So just to set the backdrop um, of, of what we're, why we exist really is this global situation where we know that there are um, at least 58 known um, armed conflicts going on. There are about um, 65 and a half million people who have been forcibly displaced. 22.5 .5 million of them um, have become refugees, and about half of them are children. And that adds up to about 28,000 people are forced to flee their home every day. So that's, that's why we're here, and this is what we're trying to respond to. So St. Vincent Catholic Charities has been doing this service for over 40 years. Uh, we've resettled uh, over 16,565 um, refugees um, in the last 40 years from 48 different countries. So we've been very busy, um, and all these folks have become part of our community, and, and we're very proud um, that that's, this is part of what makes Lansing Lansing. So the program, uh, the national program, has been around for a long time. It, it really started um, at the end of the, the U.S. involvement in the conflict in Vietnam. Um, and it's traditionally received very strong bipartisan support, and it's received support of, um, strong support of every president from Ronald Reagan through Barack Obama. Um, there are nine national resettlement agencies uh, that work throughout the country. Um, I'm not going to list all of them. They're there. I can spell them out if you want to. The first one is the U.S. Um, Conference of Catholic Bishops, and that's the, the biggest program in the country, and that's the organization that we work with. And uh, St. Vincent Catholic Charities is the refugee resettlement agency in Lansing. Okay. Am I not loud enough? Can you g bring the microphone a little bit closer? Okay, there. All right. Is that better? Yep. No, it's I'm sorry, it's this feedback <coughs> coming from, I don't know if it's coming from the sound room or whatever, so oh. please continue. Okay. Yeah. So I'll start with the definition of a refugee, just to be clear about who it is that we're working with. So we're working with people who have already um, received a determination of refugee status from the United Nations, and that um, determination is um, goes like this. It's somebody who has fled their country, they've crossed into another country. So there's a difference between someone who might still be in their country. They've crossed into another country and they have a well-founded fear of persecution based on race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group or political opinion. And they can't return to their country because they will continue to be persecuted. So this is the primary group of people that we work with. We also work with um, another group we call them SIVs, but these are people who have special immigrant visas. And in the news, you'll hear about them. Um, they'll talk about uh, interpreters. So these are folks, uh, mostly um, Afghans and Iraqis, who served the US government in Afghanistan and Iraq, usually as interpreters for the military. But they have also done some other, um, maybe administrative services. And because of their relationship with the US, they've been put into danger. So they can also come here and receive refugee services. We also um, serve some asylees and some victims of human trafficking. So how do they get to the USA? Well, every situation is a little bit different. Um, but in general, there's some kind of event in their country, a persecution of an ethnic group, or there's an armed conflict. They've had to flee. They go to another country. Maybe a refugee camp is set up. They're identified by the UN. And they'll be granted their refugee status based on that definition. And then there's often a very long waiting game to determine what's going to happen with this population. Can they go back home? Is it going to be safe at some point? Should, could they stay where they are a little bit longer? Or do they need to be resettled? And 
sometimes that can take 20, 30 years. You know, it usually takes quite a bit of time before the decision is made to resettle a population. Once it's determined that the only solution is resettlement, then they choose a country. If they choose the U.S., then our whole process starts. And so we've got a very um, long and involved um, security clearance process. We also have, we do medical um, clearances, cultural orientation, English classes. It usually takes um, one to three years um, to get through all of that. So, and these were um, just uh, revised last October. Um, as folks know, there was the end of um, one executive order um, on October 24th, 2017, which started a new executive orders, which increased some of these, um, the paperwork and the processes for people to be cleared. So a lot of people have had to start over um, and take longer to get here. So this chart is um, the arrivals that we've seen from different countries over the last five years. So I wanted to put, you know, um, a, a, a larger um, number of people here. So the biggest numbers obviously were from Congo and Somalia, um, and, and, and we're very happy to be helping these populations. You've, you've probably heard some of the stories that have happened um, to women, especially in Congo, so um, they're doing very well here, and we're happy to be saving them. Um, we've also been uh, helping people from Bhutan and Burma and Iraq and Afghanistan and many, many places. We're a very diverse resettlement site, and this is how we can be responsive to some of the needs in the world. So what we do at St. Vincent Catholic Charities, we work on government grants, and so we have to obey their rules, and their rules say that we have to do a lot of stuff in the first 90 days after arrival. And that includes finding them a place to live, we pick them up at the airport, we get them food to start off with, um, we take them to the grocery store. We do hours and hours of orientation just to get them ready to deal with life here. Um, we get their um, social security cards and their Michigan ID cards. And then we try to commit, uh, connect them to the community, you know, either through, um, through their faith or through volunteers or through organizations so that they have people that they can turn to after the, those 90 days. We also have um, grants to do employment services, and we do a lot of employment services. Um, that includes more orientation, training, financial literacy, English classes. Um, we connect with employers, and, um, and we help you know, uh, support people in their orientations um, and their pre-employment services. And employment is actually something that's going very well for us right now. Um, we have, right now we have lists of employers who, who would really like to see refugees coming because they need laborers. So, um, so people, you know, a lot of people have jobs as, as soon as their um, social security card comes in the mail. So um, that's one thing that's working very well. Because self-sufficiency is our goal. We want people to, you know, to be able to support themselves as soon as possible. So there are um, lots of organizations that um, we connect our clients to and who also work with refugees, including um, the Refugee Development Center, Samaritas, um, the All Faith Alliance for Refugees, and the Global Institute of Lansing, which is a school um, that helps uh, refugees who've aged out of the, um, the public school system, it helps them to get high school diplomas. So why do we do this? Well, we're St. Vincent Catholic Charities, and we know that this is a humanitarian endeavor, and this um, saves lives. We know there are a lot of people who just would not have made it if they've had to stay in a refugee camp any longer. Um, and the Bible tells us that we have to welcome strangers, and so that's what we do. But we also know that, you know, for us it's, it's an investment for our community. When we help them, they turn around and help us. And there have been a lot of studies showing um, the economic uh, benefits of refugee resettlement. And the most recent one came out of Detroit just this summer, um, which found, you know, that in 2016 alone, um, they generated between 22, um, 229 million um, and 295 million in new spending and taxes and all kinds of other things. We have employers here who say great things about our clients. I have one quote up here, and you can read that. Um, you know, they've, they're, they're working with us, they're living with us, and they're, they're making an impact on us both culturally and economically. But we also know, and we just heard that, you know, um, people in, in Michigan are aging, but most refugees are much younger. They're, um, the average age is 25 um, for our clientele. They're working hard. They're paying taxes. They're buying houses. They're starting businesses. They're putting their kids in schools. And so we know they're doing really great things here. 
So to be inclusive and supporting, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things you can do, and just being supporting to to refugees in the community. We think um, most people who live in the Lansing area know people. You know, they're your neighbors, and you work with them. And you know, this is um, a challenging environment right now. So if you know somebody who came as a refugee, just welcome them and befriend them, and, and let them know that um, that this is their home as well. If you want to go deeper, you can work with with some of the agencies that I mentioned earlier who serve refugees. Um, one thing that I, I really appreciate about this opportunity today is we try to get out there and do as much education as possible. We want everybody to know what refugee resettlement is, what we're doing, and who we're serving. So if you have um, any opportunity to, to attend an outreach session, to create an outreach session you know, in your place of worship, or if you belong to a rotary or a school or anything, please let us know. We would love to come out and do as much education as possible. Um, we know that uh, language is um, a big challenge sometimes, and there are some um, options out there to help people with language. Um, but first, know that people are trying. You know, a lot of times people get frustrated because they hear somebody speaking a different language in a store. It takes a while to learn a language, and the older you are, the harder it is. But really, people are trying. Um, there are some official um, professional language interpreter services, like 7C Lingo, and that's a local um, organization and it's um, it was created here by some local folks and they do great and we have a contract with them so if if we're working with somebody who we don't have the language um, for that um, particular person we will call 7c lingo there also are a lot of apps that you can put on your phone including Google Translate so if you're in the grocery store and you see somebody you know a lot of times you could just speak into your phone and, and get a response and help them really quickly like that um, and we also uh, provide a drop-in interpreter service. We've partnered with the um, DHHS office on Cedar Street. And so we have a schedule. If you see someone who's really struggling with someone, maybe they have a legal matter, or maybe they're getting mail that they don't understand and it looks serious, send them down based on this schedule, um, and they can get somebody. It's a case manager who can help them understand um, what's going on. So. Also, just, you know, being compassionate to people and being patient, you know, just imagine what it would be like if you suddenly found yourself in another country. It can be very confusing and incredibly stressful. Um, so, you know, we just want uh, people to be kind as possible. Um, know that some refugees are bullied. Um, we've had lots of stories of people being bullied in stores, on the bus, people being yelled at, people having their hijabs pulled off. Um, so, you know, if you see something like that happen, just go and stand next to somebody and show some solidarity. You can also help connect newcomer, newcomers to other service agencies, you know, especially those um, in our uh, collaboration um, that we work through, we have this no wrong door policy. And Shireen will talk a little bit about that, but, you know, the library, the health department, DHHS, there's so many places in town, if you refer somebody, they should know where to refer them further if they need other services. And we always recommend to everybody to hire multilingual people. Speaking another language is a skill, and if you just put that on your application or wherever you work, um, and somebody writes that down, you realize that they can really open a lot of doors for you if you, if you hire multilingual people. <clears throat> 